People are pirates, just resurrected, busy chopping red dogs, moistening when Mojang travels to the world of One Piece with the soul-refining technique of Dark Soul 3, only then did I realize that the soul of a strong person is really a good thing. Swordsmanship Devil Fruit Six Types Dominant Refining is Done Keywords of the Novel I am the One Piece, with no pop-ups, 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 comma, I am the One Piece, with no pop-ups, I am the One Piece. Chapter 1 Pills You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 1 Pills Dizziness, Nausea, Vomiting a severe stabbing pain came from the mind, as if a broken blade had pierced into the brain, stirring wildly. Mo Jing felt that his brain was divided into three parts, one was his agonizing consciousness, and the other was a manic boxer, crazily beating his soul. The final part is a madman, holding a colorful flag and cheering and laughing wildly in the cage of consciousness, effortlessly stuffing an extraordinary technique called refinement into his mind. Enough, stop it quickly, it can't fit anymore Mo Jing pulled his hair and let out a low scream of pain. He was shaking and wanting to stand up, but the ground was shaking even harder than him. Two large left and right swings slammed him onto the door railing, and then another fierce dunk hit the floor with a thud. The damp and moldy smell surged into his nose from the wooden floor. He finally couldn't help but lie on a wooden barrel and vomit wildly. Half a minute later, he leaned against the barrel and sat panting on the ground. The narrow room was filled with the sour smell of vomit, the air was filthy, and the headache seemed to be worsening. The surrounding objects were slowly shaking. But for some reason, he felt much fresher. Is this the world of neurosis? I feel pretty good. In his wild thoughts, a spark drifted leisurely before his eyes. Mo Jing was stunned for a second, then lowered his head in amazement and looked at his left hand along the flying Mars. At some point, a deep, eclipse-like ring appeared in the palm of his hand. With the emergence of the ring seal, the cramming transmission in his brain finally came to a stop, and countless red runes flashed before Mo Jing's eyes, presenting a complete technique called soul refining in his mind. A piece of information emerged along with it. Name. M.O. Jing Age. 18 Race. Human Force. H. Min H. Body. H. Brain. E. Soul Ability. None Skills. General Education LV4, Software Engineering LV3, Soul Refining LV50 Trait. None Pills. This was the first thought that flashed through M.O. Jing's mind. As one of the loyal sponsors of a certain orphanage, he realized that he was probably wearing something. Not to mention the inexplicable panel information that popped up in his mind, he was too familiar with the palm of his hand. The symbol of Dark Souls 3, the symbol of the first flame about to extinguish, and the symbol of the world facing its end. Just seeing its shape can unconsciously evoke the pain of the screen slowly turning black. Pain. It's really painful. There is also the inexplicably filled, refining, technique in the brain, which is not the unique technique of Rudolf, one of the salary kings and exiles in Soul 3. This technique, similar to alchemy but more specialized, can refine deformed souls and solidify certain traits within them, ultimately making them into certain props. Simply put, it means using the soul to create props. From the final product, from weapons and equipment to magic spells. Everything can be refined. It's simply a great companion for games and a heartwarming treasure for players. There's nothing wrong with him except that it shouldn't have happened to him. He feels unworthy of possessing such powerful abilities. A certain multiverse hero once said. The greater the ability, the greater the responsibility. The meaning is. You don't have any skills at all, you still have such good abilities, aren't you waiting to die? Mo Jing felt that he was almost like this now. 
He stabilized his emotions and quickly confirmed that his body was still the same as before through the smooth fitting and precise measurement of his palms and objects, and then glanced at his own attributes. Based on the description of the information in your mind. Strength, agility, physique, and brain correspond to the four attributes of strength, agility, physique, and brain power. Strength is a comprehensive description of muscle explosiveness, endurance, and other factors. Based on the posture of the force and the influence of other factors, the actual results displayed have a large fluctuation space. Agility is a comprehensive description of the body's flexibility, neural response speed, and other factors, which can vary based on weight, energy attributes, and other factors. Physical fitness is a comprehensive description of the ability of muscles to resist impact, the ability of internal organs and soft tissues to withstand pressure, and the ability of the body to recover. It is the key to balancing strength and agility. As for brain power, it is a comprehensive description of the range and degree of brain activity when focusing on something, and cannot be used as a criterion to determine whether a person is intelligent, bold. A healthy adult with brain development reaching the average human level should have all attributes between G and F. M. O. Jing looked at his attributes of 3H and 1E, as if he had seen a stickman. He was not surprised by this, as he did neglect exercising after work. But a good 25-year-old, no, now he's an 18-year-old young man, his anger is on the rise, why should he go and spread the fire? Even if you have a wife, you can't go. After calming down a bit, M. O. Jing began to reflect on his situation and soon realized that things were not that simple. Taking into account his surroundings, he roughly went through the plot of Soul 3 in his mind and suddenly discovered a problem. There seems to be no elements related to the sea in Soul 3's game. From his current situation, it can be seen that the shaking room, damp floor, creaking sound, convenient storage round wooden bucket, kerosene lamp hanging on the door, and the sound of waves crashing outside the wooden wall everyone is telling him that he is currently in a wooden boat floating on the sea. Another big wave is coming, causing the ship to sway left and right. Mojing, who was already on guard, quickly supported the wall with one hand and the just vomited bucket with the other. If this bucket is emptied, he probably will have to vomit again. Someone kept running by outside the door, shouting something urgently. It sounded very busy, so M. O. Jing decided to go out and take a look first. He walked to the door, clenched the door handle, and was about to open it, suddenly, a loud noise came from outside. Something sharp seemed to have cut through the air vaguely. Immediately after, a mournful scream came out and abruptly came to an end. Dong, dong, dong something like a ball rolled down the stairs. The sounds of terror were chaotic. M. O. Jing's scalp tingled for a moment, and he withdrew his hand like an electric shock. The thing rolling down won't be a human head, will it? Just listening to the sound, he can imagine that bloody scene. What happened outside? Before he could come up with a solution, the second scream rang out. The third sound. The door quickly fell into silence. The waves hit the wooden boat, leaving only the creaking sound of the wooden boards. Long and monotonous. It seems that only M. O. Jing is left on the entire ship at this moment. He stood in the narrow cabin, still holding out his hand, his eyes wide open, not daring to move. I dare not let out the grandeur. Too fast. All of this happened too fast. Too fast for him to even think. I can only instinctively stand still, hold my breath, hoping that those outside will completely ignore me. The red liquid slowly flowed in along the crack of the door, gradually wetting his grass shoes. Duh. A faint footsteps suddenly sounded outside his door. M. O. Jing's pupils tightened in an instant, staring tightly at the wooden door. Heartbeat accelerates to 200. Don't open the door. Don't open the door he prayed in his heart. The door was indeed not opened. Because the other party doesn't even need to open the door. I only heard three mournful sounds of the wind, and three cold lights flashed through the wooden door. 
The dilapidated wooden door slowly collapsed in the desperate gaze of M.O. Jing. End of this chapter. Chapter 2. Immortals. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 2 Immortals A bright orange color flashed past the door, for a moment, M.O. Jing thought he had seen a dreamlike maple forest. In this dark and cramped cabin filled with blood. Click. The sound of the blade sheathing rang out, and the magnificent orange feather weave slowly draped over an old man's body, like a maple leaf growing on a withered stump. The strong smell of blood poured into the narrow cabin. M.O. Jing took a step back. A door apart, a faint yellow light shone on his face. He tightly held a mop that he had grabbed to make up for it, while the elderly man in gorgeous feather weaving stood outside the door, looking contemptuously at him. The cold sky light hit his back, like a merciless killer in a rainy night. Lips moved slightly. The old man seems to have said something. But M.O. Jing couldn't hear clearly or understand. A thread of blood bloomed from his ear to his neck. In fact, at the moment when the wooden door was chopped to pieces just now, he was already injured. At this moment, he could only hear his heart beating like a drum. But the more times it is, the more sober and calm he becomes. Is this the legendary sword energy? How terrifyingly strong! Pain seeps into the brain like twisted threads. He tightly grasped the wooden stick in his hand, searching for the almost impossible opportunity for a counterattack. The old man seemed to sense Mo Jing's attitude, and his gaze towards him suddenly became contemptuous and pitiful. Obviously, this is not the answer he wants. He whispered something again, as if lamenting the little man's lack of understanding. Slowly turn around and face Mo Jing. Click. Thumb pushed the knife out of its sheath. Just as the old right hand grasped the handle of the knife, a loud noise came from above. The fragile deck was shattered by a tremendous force. In the pouring sunlight, a burly man who was over two meters tall and nearly three meters tall, covered in injuries, laughed wildly and fell from the sky. He he lulu lulu. M.O. Jing dares to swear that he has never seen such an ugly man with such strange laughter in his life. His face seems to be made up of two buttocks, with a cool red hair tied on both sides of his head into two thick and straight headbands, fixed with two metal balls, looking like two crab eyes. And on both of his hands, he was directly equipped with two huge steel crab claws, one of which was already broken. From the flat gap, it seems that it was cut off by the old man's sword. It is not difficult to imagine that before this, the man had already fought against the old man, but was defeated and temporarily retreated. At this moment, he seized the opportunity to kill again, shouting in language that Mo Jing couldn't understand, and a huge crab claw flickering with cold light enveloped the old man. The old man's reaction was extremely fast, with a roar of anger and a brilliant sword light splitting behind him. Right now. M.O. Jing's eyes suddenly widened. He grabbed the moment when the old man turned around, took a step forward, and fiercely lifted the mop in his hand, hitting the old man's crotch. No man can ignore attacks from below. The old man had a surprised and angry expression on his face, instinctively wanting to clamp his legs. But this action instantly made his flawless posture loose and flawless. The steel crab claws falling from the sky effortlessly swung open the blade and smashed it down with a loud bang. Tear it off. The dreamlike maple forest split open, blood flew rapidly, one arm spun and rolled to the ground. The cabin seemed to quiet down for an instant. This is a result that no one expected. Even the ugly strong man was stunned for a second. The elderly are even worse. Half of his face was almost stained red with blood and water, trembling as he touched the broken wound on his left arm. The intense pain seemed unable to leave a trace on his old, withered face. His face was only filled with surprise and anger. He actually lost an arm here on this pirate ship with a bounty of just over ten million. Dense bloodstains crawled into his eyes. The veins on top of my head burst. The old man suddenly turned back, 
the gloomy face seemed to transform into a demon in the shadows. The terrifying killing intent instantly submerged Mo Jing. Damn it, the hatred has shifted. Mo Jing's eyes darkened, almost unable to lift him in one breath. He turned around without hesitation and ran towards the hatch. However, in just one second as he turned around, he watched helplessly as the old man, like a second-stage horror-killing god, slashed the incoming steel crab claws in half with one blow. Then he arched, stepped on the ground, and instantly shot in front of him. A snowy knife light pierced through his heart. Mo Jing opened his eyes wide and took two steps forward, kneel slowly to the ground. The cold blade withdrew from the heart. At the same time, it also withdrew the last temperature of this body. Even when he died, his eyes were still wide open, as if he couldn't believe that the life he had just traveled through had come to an end. However, this is reality and cannot tolerate any luck. Dong. The body fell to the ground, warm blood gushing out from the heart, blending with countless severed limbs and legs around it, becoming the backdrop for this terrifying massacre. The old man disdainfully spat out a mouthful of blood foam, turned around, shook his sword, and once again killed the ugly strong man in the darkness. Amidst the loud noise, the fierce battle resumed. No one noticed that after the old man turned around and left, sparks rose like fireflies on the just-fallen body. Fresh firewood, ignited. On Mo Jing's right arm, a burning fire ring slowly emerged, imprinted. If he were still awake at this moment, he would definitely recognize it at a glance. This is the symbol of the undead in the Dark Soul 3, the imprint of the Dark Ring, which is the mark left by the abyss after the curse of immortality on humanity. Countless runes recombined in Mo Jing's mind, forming new information. Name Mo Jing Age 18 Race Undead Status Salary King 00.09.59, Force. G, H, Min G, H, Body. G, H, Brain. D, E, Soul Ability. Immortal Curse Skills. General Education LV4, Software Engineering LV3, Soul Refining LV50, Initial Fire LV1 Traits. Dark Ring Asterisk 1, Initial Fire A few minutes later, the battle inside the cabin was nearing its end. The ugly man who descended from the sky is not a match for the old man. But the old man with a broken hand is no longer as agile and powerful as before. Although his swordsmanship is still sharp, as the battle time lengthens, he loses more and more blood, and his state begins to plummet. Chang the broken crab claws once again pressed against the shiny blade. The ugly big man, covered in injuries and on the brink of exhaustion, let out a gasping and strange smile. He he lulu lulu old man, why doesn't this knife have any strength? He smashed open the blade, threw out the hidden sharp cone inside the crab claws, and flew up. The two crab claws staggered and attacked, giving the old man no chance to rest. Unexpectedly, the former pirate hunter Beyeduo would die in the hands of my iron pliers and bolii today. The ugly man laughed wildly, and as he thought about his reputation after this battle, he had a bit of an air of bravery and bravery. He raised the crab claws with both hands high and was about to smash them when suddenly he seemed to see something and opened his mouth wide. It was in this short second that the experienced pirate hunter Beyeduo immediately seized the opportunity. He instantly withdrew his knife from his waist and used all his strength to kick against the wooden wall, shooting towards Iron Clamp and Bolii. The long sword in hand slashed twice like a phantom. One blade flow. Wolf bite. Two figures intertwined in an instant. And Bule's body interrupted in mid-air and made two cuts. Pop, Pop Beyeduo slowly sheathed his sword and viciously swallowed the blood that surged up his throat. If you want my life, you're a bit short. As soon as he finished speaking, he suddenly opened his eyes wide and slowly lowered his head. A plain pirate machete pierced through his heart from behind, and flames quietly beat on the blade. End of this chapter. Chapter 3 
Soul Refining. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 3 Soul Refining Shit. The curved knife was coldly drawn out. Beeduo covered her heart and stumbled forward two steps, trembling as she turned her head. After seeing the figure behind her, she widened her eyes in disbelief. How? How? Maybe. Brush. A stream of inflammation swept over the neck. The old head rolled down to the ground. The cabin shook slightly, and Mo Jing stood calmly in the bloody killing ground, without the joy of seeking revenge or killing a powerful enemy. He just stared at everything with indifference, his lava-like eyes carrying an inhumane indifference. It seems that beneath this body is no longer a human. A milky white light cluster with a faint orange hue appeared on the body of Beeduo. Mojing instinctively understood what this was. In Soul 3, it represents the drop of an item, but it seems a bit different here. He extended his left hand, and the light immediately flew towards the ring mark in the center of his palm. A message flashed through my mind. Double slash. Beeduo's soul, soul volume. 3200 has a name. This is boss level treatment. After thinking about the old man's fierce combat power before, if it weren't for his unexpected provocation of the Ean stick, he would probably have slaughtered all the people on this ship. Mo Jing acknowledged his position as a small boss. Immediately, I thought of the level 50 soul cultivation in my mind. Unlike the original refining technique of Rudolph in the game, his soul refining does not require the assistance of a smelting furnace. The knowledge in his mind tells him that he is a perfect smelting furnace. Just throw your powerful soul into the ring seal in your hand and add enough soul as firewood to refine it into an item. Now he has a powerful soul. All that's missing is, enough firewood. Mo Jing scanned the cabin and finally fixed his gaze on the burly and ugly man. Even though his body broke in two, the other person still did not die immediately. Life force is so strong that people are afraid. Mojing picked up Beeduo's sword and walked towards the man's upper body. Draw a knife and pierced the other person's heart without any hesitation. Under the cold gaze, it seemed as if all emotions were burning in flames. A milky white light appeared on the corpse. Mo Jing reached out and took it into his palm. Iron pliers. The soul of Mbole, soul volume. 1020 crush it in one go. The basic soul amount required to refine double slash. Beeduo's soul is 1000. Just enough. A warm current flows out of the shattered soul and merges into the left hand's ring seal. In the deep darkness, there seemed to be a rapidly rotating furnace core hidden, with scattered sparks shooting out from the palm of the hand. Soul refining begins. Bang! Just then, the cabin door was suddenly knocked open. Three guys with big arms and tattoos, wielding knives and old dot-fashioned flint guns, burst in shouting loudly. At a glance, I saw Mo Jing holding a long sword upside down at the bottom of the cabin, piercing the captain's heart. The house leak happened to rain continuously at night, and at this critical moment, the flames on Mo Jing's body were completely extinguished, and the status column on the panel quietly disappeared. The countdown to the salary king status has ended. He wasted too much time waiting for both of them to lose before. At this moment, the seven emotions and six desires of mortals return to this body once again. Returning at the same time, there is also his fragile physical attributes. Mo Jing woke up like a dream, then he looked up helplessly at the three people. Four gazes intertwined in mid-air. One of them had a crab tattoo on his left arm, and the guy with a knife in his right suddenly shouted something. The other two of them looked at Mo Jing with fierce eyes. The three of them jumped down the stairs without saying a word and approached Mo Jing with a grim smile. Mo Jing let out a long sigh. That's really enough. Is he playing any infinite challenge level? If one wave of enemies dies, immediately brush another wave how could a person be so unlucky? He has died once before, don't you let him go. 
he clenched the handle of the knife. It must be admitted that with his garbage-like nature, he is not a match for any of these three people, let alone the three. But he doesn't want to hide anymore. Run the fuck away. Go through his mother. He just wants to live, who's bothering him? Mo Jing forcefully pulled out the long knife from the corpse and spat a mouthful of saliva. The fear, confusion, anger, and unwillingness that have been suppressed since the time of travel are all blended into a beautiful CNM. Then with a roar, he charged towards the three of them. At the same time, soul refining ends. A message flashed through my mind. Swordsmanship Crystal Beeduo, or, Fast Wind Double Slash, Choose, Swordsmanship Crystal. Beeduo. In an instant, the familiar madman in his soul returned once again. This time, the amount of information was even greater, so huge that the corners of M.O. Jing's eyes, nostrils, and mouth immediately burst with blood, and his brain seemed to explode with bulging veins. Even overlapping illusions appeared before his eyes. A quiet dojo, a magnificent maple grove, towering waves, corpses piled up in a mountain of corpses the enemy is flashing towards him in these illusions. But M.O. Jing only felt refreshing, incredibly refreshing. He burst out laughing wildly like a mad dog, and his terrifying form, like a demon like Shura, immediately intimidated the three of them. In the moment when the three of them were stunned, crazy figures flashed by, and three sword lights suddenly appeared. The three of them widened their eyes and slowly collapsed, covering their necks. Bang! The cabin door was knocked open, and a crazy figure stumbled out, laughing wildly and disappearing into the brilliant sunlight. The dazzling sunshine, warm sea breeze, and occasional seabirds flying by. On the boundless blue sea, a tiny wooden boat like an ant drifts alone on the surface of the sea. G. Yeah, the hull swayed slightly, a figure covered in blood lay on the boat, staring blankly at the sky. Like a withered and withered shape. Today is the third day of the journey, M.O. Jing has become stronger, I'm almost dead too. He recalled more than once what happened three days ago, if God could give him a chance to start over, he would rather kneel down on the spot and beg for mercy. Okay, what kind of madness are you? He still remembers the scene at that time. After killing out of the cabin, he could hardly distinguish between reality and illusion, but his spirit was elevated to the extreme. He almost laughed wildly and slaughtered the pirate ship that had already been slaughtered by Beeduo once again. After slaughtering six or seven inconspicuous pirates, he was surprised to find several clever little ghosts crowded onto a small boat, ready to set off as they cut the ropes. So without saying a word, he pressed plus one wildly, jumped onto the small boat, and then engaged in another round of indiscriminate killing. Until he was exhausted and lying in a pool of blood, the illusion in front of him gradually disappeared, and suddenly realized that he seemed unable to go back. The pirate ship that was still behind a few minutes ago, took advantage of the moment when he had just killed recklessly, and had already fled in panic. And then. Then it became the current situation now he doesn't have any illusions anymore. Under his deliberate control, Beeduo's swordsmanship experience is merging with him in a gentle and harmless way. The only problem is that he hasn't eaten anything for three days. Three days. If it were water, it would be fine. A corpse that fell from the bow of a ship left him with a small pot of fresh water. But I just finished my last sip, he's almost dead. Every time he sat up in shock from his dying illness and saw the vast and endless sea around him, he was immensely certain of this fact. Then he would remember that he was already an immortal and there was no real death, leading to deeper despair. He will endure an infinite cycle of hell on this vast sea until his consciousness collapses. M.O. Jing painfully closed her eyes. So, time passes by day by day. On the fourth day, on the fifth day, on the sixth day a huge shadow slowly covered the small boat. Recommended. End of this chapter. Chapter 4. M.O. Does Emotional Fish Killing Machine. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 4. 
Mo does emotional fish killing machine Mo Jing has been saved, a passing merchant ship rescued him, confirmed his language barrier, fed him water and liquid food, transported him to a small island, threw him onto the dock, and then hurriedly loaded and unloaded goods before running away. I didn't even leave my name. Afraid of getting involved in more relationships with him. Mo Jing was a bit confused, but upon careful consideration, he could understand. After all, he is now covered in blood and still holding a long sword that is full of blood, which doesn't look like a good person at all. I can't tell what great danger is hidden behind me. As an ordinary merchant ship, being able to help to this extent is already their limit. Mo Jing silently gave them a thumbs up in his heart. To his surprise, the townspeople here seem to be very familiar with how to deal with a severely injured person of unknown origin. Several aunties with vegetable baskets and waist thicker than a wine barrel surrounded him, pointing and pointing. After some discussion, he was sent to an old man's house. After friendly negotiations, Mo Jing temporarily settled in this small town. Dada is the first word he learned. It's the name of the old man's granddaughter. She is a few years younger than Mojing, only as tall as Mojing's chin, with beautiful golden long hair and fair skin like milk. When she approaches, she can see the faint freckles around her nose bridge, but it makes her appear more youthful and cute. Like a lively sparrow. This is Mo Jing's first impression of her. After learning that Mo Jing's language was not fluent, she volunteered to teach him how to read. This directly led to a sharp increase in the frequency of meetings between Mo Jing and the old man, especially in the evening when he delivered the goods to Da and went out. As soon as he turned his head, he could see the old man sitting lonely on the stone at the door, wiping his gun. According to Dada, since he arrived, dust has never appeared on the old man's gun again. The old man's name is Albus Ken, he is the owner of a dairy farm outside the town, and one dot third of the vast grasslands surrounding the town belong to him. Along with the fishing grounds and orchards in the town, Imlo Town has three pillar industries, and there are dedicated transport ships to purchase goods every month. He also admitted that the purpose of accepting Mo Jing was to make him work for nothing. As for the identity issue of Mo Jing, which the people in the town were worried about, the old man didn't care at all. He himself is a retired Navy officer, and Dada's parents are now working in a nearby naval branch. On the second day after Mo Jing woke up, the old man came to his door carrying a rifle and danced, saying that if he dared to have any ulterior motives, he would regret coming into this world. Considering that the other party had taken him in at least, Mo Jing wisely did not discuss the accuracy of that old dot fashioned smoothbore gun with him. After settling down, Mo Jing's most urgent task was to figure out where he had traveled. He inquired about many rumors and news about this world from Dada, but only came to some ambiguous conclusions. Just thinking about it, Imlo Town is just an inconspicuous town, and the villagers live a peaceful life. Dada, a naive little girl, naturally knows little about it. Originally, Mo Jing thought so until one day, Dada inexplicably picked up a stack of wanted notices from somewhere to use as teaching materials for Mo Jing. Mo Jing pointed to a handsome guy who looked very attractive and asked her, who is this handsome guy with red hair? Dada recognized for a while and taught him to read word by word, fragrance. Fragrance. Ku. Ku. S. Hiss, Mo Jing took a cold breath and grabbed the wanted notice. Looking at the handsome and scumbag-looking man in the photo, it took him a long time to blurt out a sentence in his native language. Wuzhua, Pirate King. Not recognizing Shanks was not Mo Jing's fault, he is an ancient anime fan, and the last time he chased One Piece was several years ago. The plot has long been forgotten, I can only occasionally recall a few names, such as Nami, Robin, Hancock, and so on cough moreover, there is a significant difference between real.life characters and anime characters, such as Shanks, who is more gloomy and domineering on the wanted list than in anime. At first glance, it doesn't seem like a good person. However, these seem to have nothing to do with Mo Jing. 
the grandeur of the sea cannot affect this remote town. This place is like a peach blossom paradise, separated from the colorful sea world. Mo Jing milked at the dairy farm for half a month and successfully overcame the boredom of not having a phone or internet, quickly integrating into the peaceful life here. Sometimes he also thinks that if he lives here for his whole life, being an ordinary person would be good. Unfortunately, he is no longer an ordinary person at this time. Brush The snowy knife light crisscrossed in mid-air, and two plump and tender fish balls, two meters long, landed on the fish-killing platform. Mo Jing skillfully changed his knife, chopped off the ferocious fish head covered in serrations, and sorted it into different slots. How about it, Krieg? Boss boss of the green pine fishery, holding a cigarette in his mouth, proudly introduced to the man with dark skin beside him. This is the most skilled fish killer under my command. If you catch a big fish, should you give it a try? Krieg, who had been staring at Mo Jing's hands from beginning to end, took a deep breath and said, it's indeed a perfect sword skill. Speaking with a hint of regret, he glanced at Mo Jing's frail body and said, however. Isn't it too thin and weak? You know, boss, a big fish over five meters tall can't be dealt with just by sword skills. I knew you would say that. Perth snapped his fingers and said, Mo Jing, give him a performance. Mo Jing nodded, the surrounding fishermen immediately cheered, and five people joined forces to pull out a four-meter long, nearly five-meter long, sword-toothed horse mane fish with fierce eyes from the large pool in the center. Throw it into the sky with force. At the same time, Mo Jing pulled out a slender fish-killing knife and jumped up. Brushing, brushing, brushing it's like a silver light enveloping the saber-toothed horsehair fish. Duh. Mo Jing fell to the ground and gently wiped away the blood on the fish knife. The sound of rain echoed from the fish-killing platform behind. Fish tails, bodies, bones, heads, organs. Neatly arranged on the clean fish platform. Finally, a ferocious fish head fell and he looked up at the sky with his eyes closed in death. I don't know who initiated the first cheer, and the onlookers immediately fell into a sea of revelry. In this entertainment poor town, this kind of trick is not common. Krieg on the side was already stunned and couldn't help but exclaim, damn it, this guy's swordsmanship is as strong as a swordsman. Mo Jing glanced at him expressionlessly, glancing at the attributes in my mind again. Name. Mo Jing Age. 18 Race. Undead Force. G Min G Body. G Brain. E Soul Ability. Immortal Curse Skills. General Education LV4, Software Engineering LV3, Soul Refining LV50, Initial Fire LV2, Swordsmanship LV8, Elite Swordsman, Swimming LV5 Traits. Dark Ring Asterisk 1, Initial Fire, Rhythm of Water, Deep Breathing Isn't It? The Swordsmanship of LV8, although still far behind the heyday of Beeduo, is already considered extraordinary among ordinary people. He slightly turned his left hand and sucked in the white soul from the fish-killing platform. The soul of the sword tooth horse maimed fish soul volume. 76 good luck, obtained a complete soul. Mo Jing felt a little happy in his heart, but his face still looked calm and indifferent. Probably because Dada got too close to him, the old man drove him to the green pine fishing ground half a month ago on the grounds of finding him a new job. He was initially reluctant, until he realized that killing fish could also earn souls now, he is already an emotionless fish killing machine. End of this chapter. Chapter 5 Ace It's Ultraman, right? You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 5 Ace It's Ultraman, right? The presence or absence of a name is the key to distinguishing whether a soul can be used for refinement. Killing fish does not always yield a named soul. Mo Jing worked at the Green Pine Fishing Ground for half a month, which can be considered as understanding the law of soul emergence. It's related to his own attribute strength. 
the physical attributes of the fish are weaker than his, and after slaughter, they can only obtain incomplete souls, or fish souls. These souls belong to blank souls and can only bring some soul quantity supplements to Mo Jing. As for how much, it depends on how strong it is. For example, a fish with basic attributes of H can only obtain 0.9 soul points. Incomplete souls are much fewer than complete souls. A fish with attribute G has 10.50 soul points. As for those fish with stronger attributes than him, there is a high probability of obtaining a named soul after slaughter. They are all high dot quality refined materials. The result of soul cultivation usually has 2.3 options, according to M.O. Jing's experience, fish souls typically produce five types of items. A. Incomplete slash small attribute crystals. For example, incomplete power crystals can directly enhance the attributes of Ink Jing. This is also why he only took half a month to improve his average body attributes to G. There are too many fish stronger than him. However, so far he has only refined into the crystallization of the three systems of strength, sensitivity, and body, and has never seen the crystallization of the brain. I don't know if the legendary Sea Kings will change. B. Weapons slash equipment slash accessories This type of item usually has some special effects, the strength of one's ability depends entirely on the strength of the soul itself. For example, the slender fish killing knife used by M.O. Jane before, named Fish Lip, was obtained by refining the soul of a quick knife tiger fish. The special effect of this knife is that it becomes sharper when it cuts through fish. But in fact, in terms of sharpness, it cannot compare to his horizontal sword passed down from Bayudo C. skill. Swimming, there's nothing to say, just take a look at his LV5 swimming skills and you'll know. This thing basically comes out every time it's refined into a fish soul. After several iterations, as someone who has never been to the sea a few times, he is no less skilled in water than an old fisherman. D. Traits Rhythm of water, traits Deep breathing, traits are relatively rare among all refined products, often requiring some rare fish to have a chance of appearing. Mojing currently only has two, the former enhances his perception of water flow, indirectly increasing his swimming speed, while the latter enhances his ability to withstand pressure, in physical terms, and dive. They are all rare good things. E. Mystery Water, the crystal, named after the mystery, appears like a crystal drop of tears and is the rarest item among all refined items. So far, M.O. Jing has only been refined once. The effect is difficult to describe in words. It's like a kind of realization, very brief and mysterious. The description of the panel is very interesting. Even if foolish like a fish, there will be moments when one can instantly perceive the mysteries of water. Although fleeting, it brought great inspiration to M.O. Jing. The most intuitive manifestation is that his swordsmanship has become more rounded. If Beiduo is still alive, he can definitely see that his swordsmanship has gradually deviated from his own style and begun to have a bit of a personal flavor. Of course, there is still a long way to go before embarking on one's own path. Now, except for going to the fishing ground to kill fish at 5 p.m. every day and returning to his residence on the dairy farm at 10 p.m., M.O. Jing, I spent the whole morning soaking in the forest in the northwest of the town, exercising my body, honing my swordsmanship, and studying the secrets of the ring seal. The vast and complex swordsmanship experience is still slowly and steadily merging with him. At this speed, it will take at least two years to fully integrate. It looks a bit slow. But M.O. Jing is not in a hurry at all, he has over 80 years of swordsmanship experience, and he can absorb it in just two years. What else is there to be dissatisfied with? Moreover, he had already experienced the consequences of impatience, he doesn't want to become crazy anymore. So, the stable and fulfilling life passed by day by day. Just as M.O. Jing thought it would continue like this, Albus Ken reluctantly picked up a pirate from outside before dawn, the old man began to teach M.O. Jing the key to kidnapping and extortion. Be fierce. Your eyes must be fierce. 
Look at me. Forget it, you still have a straight face. The method of deterrence is still the same as before. The old man walked in with a gun and kicked the door with a swagger, but this time there was an extra guard with a sword and a little tail that was cheering. The old man felt that Dada's temperament was too lively, which undermined the dignity of their villainous duo, so he mercilessly kicked her out of the team. Dada is now milking in a positive and vigorous manner. Squeezing cows to moo. Mo Jing wanted to roast that the old man's tricks were useless to the really powerful pirates, but the old man's confident appearance did not hurt him. Forget it, help him keep an eye on it, just as a reward for Dada's literacy efforts. I hope you don't have to be a difficult guy Mo Jing followed the old man into the wooden house, at the first glance of my peers, I couldn't help but frown. What are you really afraid of? What are you doing? Sitting on his bed was a black-haired man with a handsome face, slightly freckled cheeks, and a string of red prayer beads hanging around his neck. His figure was sturdy and symmetrical, and he looked around eighteen years old. A red cowboy hat is placed next to the pillow. He was covered in bandages, but his face did not feel uneasy about the unfamiliar environment. When Mo Jing came in, he was propping up his chin and staring out the window with a faint smile on his lips. Seems to be filled with infinite expectations for the future. I have to admit that this man has a special temperament, like a dancing flame, gentle and quiet, but no one can know how surging heat is hidden inside it. It's very mysterious and dangerous. As expected, this deterrence ended in the old man's failure. The young pirate had no intention of respecting the old and caring for the young. He casually responded to whatever the old man said, and then did whatever he needed to do. He even fell asleep while sitting, not treating himself as an outsider at all. The old man finally left the wooden house in a fit of anger, leaving Mo Jing holding a knife and the young pirate looking at each other. This. The young pirate suddenly pointed curiously at the knife in his hand. Do you have any special way of cutting without a scabbard? Because I forgot. Mo Jing pushed the door open and walked out. The sound of young pirates laughing loudly came from the wooden cabin behind them, I don't know what strange smile this sentence poked at him. In no time, a head stretched out from the window and shouted at his back, My name is Ace, and you. Mo Jing. Mo Jing waved his hand and walked towards the town without looking back. Ace, another familiar name, when he first heard the name Albus Ken, he also felt familiar with it, I thought it was some kind of plot character, after two months of observation, he's just a terrible old man. And Ace. If he remembers correctly, it seems to be a character from Ultraman it is indeed impossible to casually encounter key plot characters like in novels. Mo Jing murmured as he walked away. He needs to get a bed back before it gets dark. Ken didn't have any extra rooms at home, and Ace occupied his bed. He had to go to town and get a new one, otherwise there would be no place to sleep at night. As for the luxurious double-decker apartment arranged for sleeping at the green pine fishing ground. Don't even think about it. Every evening, I smell the faint scent of milk on Dada's body as she learns a foreign language, and then go out to take a look at the old man's zombie-like face, it's the happiest thing for him during this time. Well, maybe that's why the old man saved another pirate and came back, end of this chapter. Chapter 6 Is just about driving people away, not using knives, right? You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 6 is just about driving people away, not using knives, right when he returned to the wooden house, it was already dark. Mo Jing removed the parts of the wooden bed from the carriage, and after a devastating renovation, he surprisingly failed to wake up Ace, who was sleeping on the other bed. It's like a death-level sleep quality. Mo Jing, full of doubts about this unfamiliar pirate, lay down and began to rest, but after tossing and turning, I couldn't sleep anymore. After all, being in the same house as a stranger pirate, so he learned from the hunters in the forest and set a small trap in front of his bed, which would trigger the bedside bell once someone touched it. However, even so, I still haven't completely let go and raised my vigilance to the highest level. 
The result was that he woke up more than ten times in one night, listening to the dead pig like snoring in my ear, there is an impulse to shake the other person awake. The next day, M.O. Jing woke up in the roar of Albus Ken. As soon as I got up, I heard the sound of jingling bells ringing in my ear. Take a closer look, at the foot of the bed, the stumbling line used to prevent external enemies had been tangled around his feet in a mess at some point. He bared his teeth, he seemed to see someone's wicked smile. Helplessly, he also breathed a sigh of relief. At least the other person was not a fierce guy. That's right, it's a bit exciting. He walked out of the wooden house with a knife in hand, and as expected, he saw Ace arguing with Albus Ken. The content is probably that Ace wants to ask the old man for a boat to go to sea, but the old man angrily scolds him for not even paying for medicine and accommodation. I'll find a way to pay it off, old man. Ace dug out his ear and said helplessly, there doesn't seem to be any anger at all, and he doesn't have a good temper like a pirate. But where does the old man care about these things? What he wants is a white dot collar worker. White worker. Just as he saw M.O. Jing walking out, Albus Ken, who was feeling angry, immediately roared. You came just in time, Mo Jing. Hurry up and drive this guy out of our house. The response to him was a gust of wind. With a flash of knife light, grass shavings dance. The old man was stuck in his throat, his anger abruptly stopped. Hurry up. It's just a matter of rushing someone, not using a knife, right neither of them paid attention to him. Ace jumped back and stood on the edge of the fence, holding down his cowboy hat. With a surprised expression on his face, he said. I didn't expect such a skilled person like you to be hidden in such a place. But. Are you really going to fight me? He lowered his hat and looked at M.O. Jing playfully, just in advance, I'm very strong. M.O. Jing held a sword with one hand and sneered disdainfully, lightly hooking his hand at him. Who can't wait anymore? The anticipation in your eyes is about to overflow. Ha, huh, you. Noticed it. The sound suddenly drew closer. The falling rain from the sky blocks out the sunlight. Dong. M.O. Jing dodged sideways, distancing himself while stomping heavily on the grass with his right foot, stabbing in the opposite direction. Shu. The long knife hole breaks through the dust, but has no sense of reality. Almost Ace's relaxed voice emanated from the smoke and dust. He dodged the blow with a gentle backward tilt, then turned around like a big fish swinging its tail, and a powerful and heavy whip leg hit him head dot on. Almost turned into a remnant. Between stillness and movement, the speed is not as fast as humans. When? While M.O. Jing retreats, he draws his sword back to block, barely blocked the blow. Despite this, he was also shaken back several steps by the immense force. Simple probing, make a high and low judgment. Both of them were pleasantly surprised. M.O. Jing took a deep breath, his hands holding knives across his face, and his gaze fixed on Ace, who was holding his hat with one hand. I didn't expect to encounter such a powerful enemy in such a place. War surged in his eyes. Next, he's not planning to keep his hands. Oh, are you serious? It seemed that he noticed his concentration, and Ace became excited. Clench your fists, put on a posture, and burst out laughing. Despite the attack, let me see your true abilities. M.O. Jing's lips couldn't help but smile. What a delightful opponent. Just as he was about to take the initiative, a soft body hugged him from behind. No stop fighting, okay. Dada said with a tearful tone. M.O. Jing's body stiffened, only then did he recall that he was still on another family's farm. Fighting here, no matter who bleeds, is hurting Dada's heart. A wave of war was instantly extinguished. He let out a silent sigh, inserted his knife into the ground, and turned around to gently pat Dada's back. If you don't fight, then don't fight, where is that does smile important in a fight? Stinky kid, where are you putting your hands? The old man, who had just come to his senses, was about to reconcile. 
Seeing this scene, he was so angry that he jumped up from the ground. And Grandpa, why did you let Mojing drive them away? Dada blushed and broke free from Mojing's embrace, taking advantage of the situation and making a difficult move. Like a pea shooter with full firepower, Ken could only hum back and forth with a straight face, occasionally admitting his mistake without any pain or itching. Surprisingly, there was also Ace among the people who had mistaken themselves. This guy's behavior lacks the dignity of a pirate, like a child who made a mistake. He lowers his head, scratches the back of his head, and keeps saying to Dada, I'm sorry, it's all my fault. It actually changed Mo Jing's perception of him a lot. Under the supervision of Dada, a storm dissipated silently before it even started. Mo Jing and AIC reconciled as before. Of course, it is unknown what they think in their hearts. That night, when Mo Jing returned from studying a foreign language in the old man's room, Ace was already soundly asleep. The beds of the two were on either side of the room, and Mo Jing didn't mean to wake him up. He admired the newly customized scabbard for a while today, lie down and quickly fall asleep. That night, he was unprepared again. Or rather, his best preparation is to cultivate his spirit and accumulate strength. The next day, Mo Jing's knife was missing. But he doesn't look particularly surprised. He knew that Ace was not someone to give up easily, and he was still thinking about how this guy would make a pact with him. I didn't expect such a simple and straightforward way. He went to the old man's house as usual and had a meal of breakfast made by Dada himself, wrapped a piece of paper when leaving, say goodbye to Dada and walk towards the forest. It's no secret that he practices swordsmanship in the forest every morning, as the hunters and fishermen in the town know. It's not difficult for Ace to get this news. Sure enough, shortly after entering the forest, I saw Ace dozing off on the tree trunk. Hello, slow down. Seemingly sensing the arrival of M.O. Jing, Ace opened his eyes and complained. There was no surprise in his tone, as if he had been convinced from the beginning that Mo Jing would definitely come to the appointment. Just as Mo Jing is certain that he will invite another battle. Perhaps. Is this also considered a kind of tacit understanding? He threw the knife to Mo Jing, stood up from the tree trunk, and smiled, there shouldn't be anyone coming here, right? Let's have a good fight, Mo Jing. Mo Jing took the knife from mid-air and did not rush to draw it. Instead, he pulled out a bag of steaming hot balls. Dadas love breakfast. Don't you plan to have breakfast before fighting? He asked with a smile on his face. Ah. Ace was taken aback and said casually, this kind of thing is completely different. Gollum the forest was temporarily quiet. People with excellent physical fitness indeed scream particularly loudly when they get hungry. I'm hungry. Ha ha ha. Ace scratched the back of his head and awkwardly smiled. Thank you, I didn't see it. You're quite a good person. He jumped off the tree trunk and was about to walk over, but Mo Jing repackaged the bun and placed it under the tree roots behind him, slowly drawing his sword, he stood in front of him, like a warrior guarding a group. A playful voice came from his mouth. If you beat me, you'll have some to eat. Ace. Dot. He lightly pressed the brim of his hat, his breath gradually becoming dangerous, and the wariness in his eyes could no longer be concealed. Take back what you said earlier, you're such a bad guy. That's it for each other. Mo Jing smiled and said, bend down, take a step, and suddenly charge forward. First strike. A silver blade of light engulfed ace. One blade flow. Wolf bite. Family members, if you think the author's writing is decent, just click on the investment and vote. End of this chapter. Chapter 7 Kind Mojing Just Wants to Be Beaten Up You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 7 Kind Mojing Just Wants to Be Beaten Up Today's forest is particularly lively, with constant muffled sounds and the sound of branches breaking. The bird panicked away, the animals in the forest curiously looked in the direction of the sound, cleverly taking a detour. After a long time, 
the noise gradually subsided. On a clearing in the forest, Mojing lay on the ground in a large font, a long knife was inserted into the nearby tree trunk, with a prominent footprint on the abdomen. He was panting heavily. Not far behind him, Ace happily devoured the dumplings. There are two light and shallow scratches on the arms and calves. This round of full force confrontation, the end is the complete defeat of Mojing. There is nothing to regret, this is the first time he has fully demonstrated what he has learned at this stage. He has reached the extreme, even exceeding his level of performance. But unfortunately, the opponent is too abnormal not to mention the direct suppression of strength and agility, the combat experience is even more seasoned than a young man. Beeduo's over 80 years of combat experience have been almost equaled by a young man around 18 years old. Fortunately, Beeduo has already died. Otherwise, according to this old man's temper, he would have to get up and get angry again. Throughout the battle, Mo Jing did not gain any advantage. Even if he holds a knife, a weapon that takes advantage of the sky, and the other party stubbornly does not use any weapons. Still the same. Even if Mo Jing is reluctant, he has to admit it, the guy in front of him, who is about his age, completely crushed him in the battle. The world of the Pirate King is truly terrifying. Any subordinate who jumps out has such combat power. The smug feeling of learning swordsmanship in Mo Jing's heart disappeared invisibly. Delicious, behind him, Ace finished eating the dumplings and couldn't forget to let out a contented sigh. Mo Jing got up from the ground. Let's have another one. I refuse. Ace refused without hesitation. He has satisfied his curiosity and no longer has the motivation to fight against Mo Jing. But Mo Jing doesn't want to let Ace go. In the battle just now, he could clearly feel that Beiduo's swordsmanship experience was merging into his body at a speed dozens of times faster than usual. At this speed, in less than two years, in less than a month, he can become the next Beeduo. Youth Edition The differences in attributes are not easily bridged. He speculated that he might have to push his strength, agility, and body all the way to around D in order to have the heat of the old Beeduo. Seeing Ace's sharp rejection, Mo Jing was not in a hurry. He sheathed the knife and said in a slow voice. I heard that you are missing a ship to sea. Ace immediately perked up. Do you have it? No. Whispering. He lay on the ground with a face on his side. But I have money. Mo Jing followed suit. You're probably not having any bad ideas, are you? Ace broke a branch and used it as a toothpick, squinting his eyes and pointing to Mo Jing. Obviously, he sensed the intention in Mo Jing's tone. Mo Jing nodded and said frankly, you beat me once, I'll give you 500 bailey. Ace hesitated for a moment and said, how much does a fishing boat cost here? Mo Jing pondered for two seconds and said, 30,000 40,000 baileys. If I help you negotiate the price, you can get 30,000 baileys. You know, I work in a fishing farm. In fact, a fishing boat only costs about 10,000 bellies, but as the number one fisherman in the fishing ground, Mojing is a good partner of fishermen, and a good townsman in Imlo town. It is still possible to exchange the prices of fishing boats with fishermen. It is not easy to make a living on the sea. It is his duty to slightly improve the living standards of fishermen. There's no way, he's such a kind dot hearted person. Win a 500 bailey game, you can get a boat for free in 60 matches. It seems that. Isn't something difficult. Ace looked at his sincere gaze and hesitated for a moment. Aren't you afraid I'll just grab it? I'm a pirate. Oh. Do you know how to grab it? Mo Jing looked at him in confusion. Ace was stunned for a moment, then suddenly burst out laughing twice and stood up from the ground. Since you want to be beaten yourself, then don't blame me. He clenched his fist with a clattering sound. If you ask me, beating you 100 times a day would be easy. Haha Mo Jing also got up from the ground and looked at him with a sneer. Impossible. Before I could finish speaking, 
the howling fist wind had already struck me in person. Mojing drew his sword and retreated, the battle is starting again. Ace didn't say anything big. With his physical fitness, it's not a problem to beat Mojing 100 times a day. But Mo Jing was not wrong either, this kind of thing cannot happen. Because he can't stand 100 meals. On the first day of accompanying practice, the two didn't even play 10 games to the fullest. Mo Jing is still suppressed on one side, even if his swordsmanship is maximized, he cannot regain any disadvantage. But it is precisely the extreme physical fitness of this spicy chicken that causes Ace to spend a lot of time waiting for Mojing to recover after each battle. I said, you're such a strange person. Mo Jing was once again knocked down, lying on the ground panting heavily. Ace took some time to hunt back and roasted the plump and juicy animal legs on the fire, making a sizzling sound. Even though swordsmanship is so good, why is your body so weak? In Ace's view, it is necessary to cultivate swordsmanship from a young age and have extremely high talent in order to possess such swordsmanship at his age. But unfortunately, Mo Jing's body is surprisingly weak. It's simply unreasonable. The incompetence of party A has seriously slowed down his speed of making money. Ace threw a cylindrical piece of hind leg meat to Mo Jing, Mo Jing is not polite, just take it and start eating. Taking one bite, the juice is delicious, plump and glutinous, making one's appetite boil. He didn't mean to explain, from the old man to the fishing ground and then to Ace, his weak body has been criticized too many times. The matter of environmental imprinting and soul cultivation cannot be explained at all, for this world, this is something beyond common sense. How come you're so strong like a monster? Mo Jing asked with unclear words, are all the sea filled with terrifying creatures like you? Of course not, but I will definitely become the strongest one. When mentioning this, Esten became interested. He suddenly stared at Mo Jing with a burning gaze, as if considering something, and the more he thought, the brighter his eyes became. How about being my crew member? He suddenly asked, with your swordsmanship, we will definitely be famous all over the world. Mo Jing shook his head and said, forget it, I'm not interested in going out to sea. At the beginning of his journey, his experience of drifting alone on the sea for six days and waiting to die has left him with lingering fear. He is an immortal, scared away by death, it's unbelievable. Impossible. Ace smiled smugly, you can't hide it from me. You guy, you are so eager for battle. You are also eager to become stronger. In this world, only the sea is the stage for the strong to fight. He suddenly jumped up and pronounced the verdict loudly. Mo Jing smiled and didn't say anything. Eating meat, resting, wielding knives and fighting again that's it on the second day, in six matches, Mo Jing suffered a complete defeat. Ace laughed arrogantly and said, your level is far from me. On the fourth day, in seven matches, Mo Jing suffered a complete defeat. He trembled and handed 3500 Bailey to Ace, patting Ace's shoulder and saying. Well done, continue tomorrow. Ace's arrogant smile stiffened on his face, he won, right. But what about happiness? On the seventh day, five matches, one draw. Ace rubbed his face and squinted his eyes as he looked at Mo Jing, who had fallen among the bushes not far away, muttering, isn't he in good condition? No, I always feel like something's not quite right. On the eleventh day, five matches, two draws. You must have cheated, right? Ace grabbed Mo Jing's collar and angrily said, how could someone improve their swordsmanship so quickly? Do you still have any powerful moves that haven't been used? On the sixteenth day, in four matches, Mo Jing lost two, drew one, and won one. Mo Jing collapsed weakly on the tree trunk, exhausted from energy. Not far from him, Ace stood in place as if lost, looking at his hands with suspicion. So far, he has won 49 games, we're almost done with our goal. Why does he feel like he's getting farther and farther away from the target, even though he's getting closer and closer to it? End of this chapter. Chapter 8
Farewell Gifts You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 8 Farewell Gifts Brushing The forest is rapidly retreating, the sharp knife light flashed through the air, twisting the branches and leaves in mid-air into fragments. A figure agile jumped back and forth on the tree trunk and rocks, dodging attacks, in front of him, the white knife light swallowed and practiced like a horse, relentlessly chasing after him, if you're not careful, you'll split a person in half. Click. A branch as thick as an arm was broken and shot towards the ground like a sharp sword. A white rainbow swept past and cut it open in the middle. At the same time, the figures on the tree flew down and kicked into the air. Glancing at the moment when the blade light pulled back, he skillfully supported the ground with his hand and hung a whip leg upside down, attempting to force open the long sword and engage in close combat. But I saw the light of the knife spinning in mid-air, like blooming flowers in their sheaths, the next second, the winding white light will pass in an instant. One Knife Flow Snake Twist M.O. Jing's long sword stopped in front of Ace's neck, he was panting heavily. The latter helplessly raised their hands, indicating that they had given up. On the twenty-fifth day, in two matches, Mojing won one game and lost one game. Two people sat by the fire, grilling a lucky audience member who had unfortunately been affected by them. Oil and water flowed down the crispy skin, and the firewood crackled. Finally stopped. Ace looked as if he had lingering palpitations. Ha! M.O. Jing is not sure why. Your swordsmanship, you bastard. Compared to M.O. Jing's progress rate, he feels like a pig these days. M.O. Jing shrugged his shoulders, don't be fooled by the recent victories and losses in battles, but he knows very well, if we fight to the death, the winner will only be ace. The same sentence goes. The difference in physical attributes is too great. A flash of fire flickered through the abdomen. The soul volume on the panel has slightly decreased. This is the new use of the initial fire he developed. Healing. Otherwise, for so many days, with his fragile physical attributes, he would have been forced to rest by Ace Hammer long ago. If that's the case, I should set sail too, Ace leaned against the grass, looking up at the sky, and suddenly said. M.O. Jing's hand paused and continued to rotate the beast's legs. Neither of them spoke for a moment. In twenty-five days, the two had already become good friends. So far, Ace has won more than sixty games, and Mo Jing has already prepared a sturdy small boat for him. In the last few days, he has been completely accompanying Mo Jing for free. And now, Beiduo's swordsmanship experience has been absorbed by Mojing, Ace, as a companion trainer, naturally lost the reason to continue staying. He is a pirate, the free sea is his ultimate destination. Mo Jing is a very nostalgic person. His first time traveling, being taken in for the first time, and his first job. Are still vividly remembered to this day. This naturally includes Ace, the first friend I made since crossing the river. It is impossible to say that there is no reluctance at all at this moment. But neither of them said much, everything remained silent. When? M.O. Jing asked. Tomorrow morning. M.O. Jing nodded. After a moment of silence, Ace couldn't help but ask again, I said, are you really not going out to sea? There are countless strong men on the sea to challenge. Do you work as a crew member? No. M.O. Jing's answer remained firm. Ace learned from him and let out a chuckle, I don't know why, but he firmly believes that M.O. Jing cannot stay on this small island forever. That night, M.O. Jing did not return to the wooden house on the dairy farm, but sitting cross-legged by the seaside, quietly watching the waves. He spread out his hand and looked at the crystals in his hand, which were like tears, emitting a mysterious blue light under the moonlight. Aoi water, asterisk 12 a chance mistake allowed him to find the trick to soul refinement. Originally, soul cultivation has upper and lower limits, the initial required soul volume is only the lower limit, as the more souls are invested, the greater the chance of cherishing items and refining them. 
Since discovering this, M.O. Jing's refining has always only selected the strongest fish sole for upper limit refining. The ultimate result is these 12 Aoi water. M.O. Jing threw them into the ring imprint in his palm at once, close your eyes. The night breeze is gentle, the ebb and flow of the tide the next day, Ace bid farewell to Albus Ken and Dada early in the morning and arrived at the dock. The sky is not yet fully bright, and the town is quiet. From afar, he saw the small boat on the dock and the figure sitting quietly on the nearby reef. Ace jumped onto the dock in two or three steps and smiled. Yo you probably didn't sit here all night, did you? Mo Jing opened his eyes and smiled. It's rare for a friend to leave, so of course we need to prepare a surprise for him. He slowly stood up from the reef. Ace furrowed his brow, and at the moment when Mojing started moving, he keenly sensed the changes on Mojing's body. The aura has changed. If in the past, Mo Jing gave people the feeling of a sharp sword, cold and sharp. So now Mojing seems to have turned into a sea, warm and silent, but inside it, it seems to hide an endless and surging undercurrent. In just one night, he couldn't see through Mo Jing. Won't we have a final battle? Mo Jing lightly tapped the sword hilt and smiled. You guy. Ace's face showed a wry smile, originally, as a day to go out to sea, he should have avoided getting injured. But at this moment, sensing the sudden change in Mo Jing's aura, his fighting spirit was constantly rising. The two stood separated by several rocks, their eyes as if sparks were shooting in the air. Don't worry, it won't be long. Mo Jing leaned down to hold his knife and chuckled lightly, as a farewell gift, let me show you. This is. Floating in the sky and ocean, fish tour. Cold light comes out of its sheath. Like water. Ace's eyes widened in an instant, and he turned sideways to punch, but it was only during the attack that we realized something was wrong, he seems to be hammering a ball of water. However, water is amorphous and no attack is effective. The cold water instead wrapped around his arms and brushed over his neck. When he regained his senses, Mo Jing's long sword was already hanging around his neck. The outcome has been decided. AC was stunned for a second, then grabbed Mo Jing's clothes in anger and said, You guy, didn't you use all your strength before? He didn't show it to him during the practice before blaming Mo Jing. Come again, he said defiantly. Mo Jing laughed heartily. Taking advantage of Ace's lack of attention, he kicked him onto the boat, cut off the grass rope tied to the dock, and with a strong push, the small boat sailed far away. Remember this failure well, my defeated subordinates. Come again. How could it be? If Ace is prepared, he will definitely lose. Are you really not coming to be my crew member, this guy? Ace stood up and stepped on the edge of the boat, shouting loudly. Let's wait until the day I decide to go out to sea. Mo Jing did not refuse this time. Farewell to Ace, the town seems to have returned to its former peace. In a blink of an eye, two years passed by in a hurry, green pine fishing ground, fish killing platform. The wind and waves hit the rocks on the shore. The 10 meter long elephant nosed cod almost occupies the entire space of the fish killing platform. More than 10 strong fish killers tightly controlled this behemoth with nets and ropes, but judging from their swaying movements, it seemed that they couldn't hold on for much longer. The former green pine fishing ground, now the owner of the green pine sea banquet, boss, anxiously walks around the fishing platform. From time to time, I looked up at the second floor of the restaurant that had been converted into an observation deck, and then stretched my neck to gaze towards the direction of the town entrance, feeling impatient. In no time, I finally saw the figure that I had been longing for all day, and quickly ran up. I wanted to complain, how did you come? But the words automatically turned to, do you want to take a break? Mo Jing lightly patted Boss's shoulder, indicating that he didn't need to worry and just kill the fish. Let's start now and finish work early. It's up to you. Perth hurriedly ran to the second floor, 
where the nobles from the kingdoms of Oichat and Goya had been waiting for a long time. End of this chapter. Chapter 9 Big Fish and Conspiracy You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 9 Big Fish and Conspiracy Today's wind is particularly noisy, Mojing, wearing a coat, walked against the sea breeze towards the fish-killing platform, the fishermen greeted him with smiles, and he waved in response one by one. In two years, the town of Imlo has deeply imprinted his mark. He walked up to the huge, elephant-nosed cod, and looked at the agile eyeballs bigger than his own fist, gently tapping its head, he smiled and said. First time meeting, please give me more guidance. His exclusive fish-killing platform is located at the farthest end of the shore, with an endless sea behind it. Mo Jing walked over, took off his robe, revealed his sturdy back, and unfolded his equipment bag on the specially made cutting board. Inside the gray cloth roll are six knives of different sizes and shapes. All of them were obtained through soul refinement in the past six months. The effects vary. In order to create momentum for him, Perth referred to these six swords as six Samadhi Sea Demons. It is said that every time an additional sword is used to produce a tattoo, the taste will be further enhanced. The number of knives to be used and the location of processing depend entirely on their owner, the top sashimi master of the Green Pine Sea Banquet. Sea Demon Mo Jing's Judgment on the Ingredients To be honest, Mo Jing felt that the name was extremely foolish, but compared to the six gods that Bose had been pondering for a long time, he was still more willing to accept the former. The fish-killing platform received a loud shout from the fishermen. Upon receiving instructions from Perth, they loosened the net rope on the elephant-nosed cod and ran nimbly towards the safety zone. A large fish of this tonnage could easily be beaten to death on the shore with just a slight struggle. The moment the net rope was released, the elephant-nosed cod immediately sensed an opportunity to escape. The silver tail of the fish fiercely drew onto the fish-killing platform, making a loud noise and soaring into the air, crossing a perfect arc in mid-air and jumping towards the direction of the ocean. As the distance from the sea approached, a happy expression couldn't help but appear in the two big eyes of the elephant-nosed cod. The only thing that's a bit I got catching is the seemingly calm and insignificant human not far away. Suddenly, the figure blurred for a moment and disappeared before its eyes. The elephant-nosed cod was taken aback for a moment, with a tingling sensation coming from all over its body, like seawater hitting dry skin. But soon this little strange thing was forgotten by it, because the seawater is already in front of us. It laughed happily and plunged into the ocean. The second floor of the Green Pine Sea Banquet, observation deck, a silence fell. The guests with graceful postures can no longer care about their past elegance. They have opened their eyes wide and their mouths wide enough to fit a pineapple. The waiter skillfully walked through the crowd, picking up the items dropped from the mouths of the VIPs. Not long after, with the first round of applause, the observation deck was engulfed in an ocean of applause. No matter how many times you watch it, it's so magical. Sally Nan Kinnett from the Kingdom of Goya exclaimed excitedly. It's simply art. The nobles beside me exclaimed sincerely. From their perspective, as the elephant-nosed cod leaped out of the fish-killing platform, a gentle knife light flashed over it like a wave of water. Subsequently, the translucent white fish bones broke free from their flesh and happily wagged their tails, jumping into the sea. At this moment, on the fish-killing platform, a finished elephant-nosed cod is quietly lying in front of the cutting board of the sea demon master, waiting to be slaughtered. Mo Jing withdrew his slender long sword, Ice Waste, as a weapon refined from the sole of the icy silver-backed shrimp, the characteristic of this knife is its ability to preserve the flavor of the slaughtered fish to the greatest extent possible. Very suitable for the first step of processing. His fingers ran through a row of fish knives, finally, it stayed on the medium-length, masseter muscle, this knife can enhance the meat quality of fish. It is the best choice for handling the second step. At this moment, in an inconspicuous corner of the observation deck, 
two guys wearing cheap suits and sharp-mouthed monkey cheeks are munching on the free fruits of the banquet. Abby, how have you been observing, the shorter man whispered. Tall Abby sneered, they're all soft-footed shrimp, not really powerful guys. I heard there's a navy here. He's an elderly man, I can solve it with just one blow. There is a naval branch nearby. Kill the foam worm first. The shorter man still feels a bit uneasy. The fisherman below looks like he has a good knife technique. That soft and fluffy knife technique is useless. Abby glanced at Mojing below and couldn't bear his companion's timidity. He pressed his neck and whispered, Hey, coward, listen to me, who is our leader? The poisonous dolphin, Luo Sibin. Fool. It's Commander, Creek. The leader of Poison Dolphin is also working for the leader of Creek. Oh, oh, but what does this have to do with what we need to do? Damn it, how could the boss send you idiot to cooperate with me to infiltrate? Abby couldn't help but explain patiently, we're doing something for Leader Creek. If you don't give us face, you won't give Leader Creek face. At this point, a sinister smile involuntarily appeared on his face. In the East China Sea, no one dares not give Click the pirates a face. The Navy. Shut up. The last fish head belongs to Mojing. This is an unwritten rule for the Green Pine Sea Banquet. Mo Jing broke it down into several parts and sent them out separately, leaving the Green Pine Sea Banquet with ease. Since a year ago, he had refined the first ice waste and suddenly wanted to order pickled Chinese cabbage fish. But after boss tasted sashimi, the orders for sashimi in Lufsong fishery gradually increased. Perth is a very skilled businessman, as fame grows, he simply worked tirelessly and transformed the green pine fishing ground into a green pine sea banquet. The main program and gimmicks are M.O. Jing, the legendary sea demon master, and his legendary tattoo. Of course, M.O. Jing's own strength is no less than what is rumored. He glanced at his attributes. Name. M.O. Jing Age. 20 Race. Undead Force. E Min D Body. E Brain. D Soul Ability. Immortal Curse Skills. Soul Refining LV 50, Initial Fire LV 7, Swordsmanship LV 14, Swordsmanship Master, Swimming LV 10, Milking LV 2, in the future, unimportant skills will be omitted, and new skills will be displayed once, traits. Dark Ring Asterisk 1, Initial Fire, Rhythm of Water, Deep Breathing, Wild Instinct compared to a year and a half ago, his attributes and skill levels have greatly improved, and he has also added a trait called, Wild Instinct. This was obtained by chance while refining the soul of the strongest predator in this forest. At present, it seems that it can strengthen his observation ability to a certain extent, making him more sensitive to the weaknesses of the enemy. The only regret is that the attributes are still slightly inferior to the original Bayesian, 4D, let alone Ace, about 4C back then. Of course, if the current Mojing and the former Beiduo were to have a battle, the winner must be Mo Jing, nowadays, he has already surpassed Beiduo too much in swordsmanship. As for Ace, it's still five-fifths open. After all, in this fantastical world, although swordsmanship can turn decay into magic, there is a significant difference in physical fitness, and examples of being demoted ten times by one force are not uncommon. Sheep, feeling uncomfortable all over. It depends more on the situation in the afternoon. End of this chapter. Chapter 10. Pirate Invasion. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 10 Pirate Invasion Mo Jing sat cross-legged on the reef by the sea, wielding a long sword and quietly gazing at the sea. The waves hit the shore, wetting his pants legs. But he seemed unaware. He has a complex emotional attachment to this ocean. He used to almost feel like death on it, but now due to swordsmanship, he feels the surging side of her life. Life and death seem to be contained within this boundless ocean. Everything about him seemed insignificant like a drop of water. Ace's prophecy seems to be gradually coming true. 
He lived a peaceful and happy life for almost two years, but he always felt like something was missing. There seems to be a hole in my heart, no matter how much happiness is filled, it will quietly run away. Perhaps as A said, his heart yearned for fighting and fighting. His swordsmanship has been stuck at LV-14 for a long time without any progress. No amount of mystery water can push swordsmanship at all. He knows that what he lacks is not insight, but accumulation. Swordsmanship is a hurdle every five levels, if he wants to successfully break through to LV-15, he needs a lot of battles to prove what he has learned. So, it's time to set sail, he has been thinking about this matter for the past month, now, only one suitable opportunity is missing, Mo Jing. Where are you? A childish voice sounded in panic in the distance. Help Mo Jing, the pirates are here. Mo Jing's fingers twitched slightly, perhaps the time has come. This is the beach on the edge of the forest, and because it is too dangerous, most people do not come here. The little brats in the town are even more so. Now that a little guy came here in a panic, Mo Jing immediately believed most of her words. He jumped up to the shore in three or two steps and picked up a little girl with a towering braid. Don't rush, speak slowly. After the little girl's confusing description, he quickly understood what had happened. A few hours ago, a pirate ship disguised as a merchant ship docked and entered the town of Imlo. They killed the telephone bug in the mayor's house, resulting in the town suddenly losing its ability to connect with nearby naval branches. Nowadays, these vicious guys are plundering money from every household. The reason why the little girl knew that Mojing was here was because today happened to be the day when the merchant ship arrived at Imlo to purchase milk, Dada and Albus Ken are both helping at the dock. It was Albus Ken who asked her to come quickly to find Mo Jing. After listening, Mo Jing gently patted her little head and asked her to take refuge at the dairy farm first. Then he blew a whistle, a golden thread threaded out of the forest and landed on his shoulder. The palm-sized golden-browed swiftlet, a species unique to the One Piece world, sometimes lowers its head to peck twice, and sometimes tilts its head to look at the Mo Jing. It's time to go to see, Zoe. Zoe was an unexpected pet adopted by Mo Jing two months ago, usually kept in the forest. Now Mo Jing plans to take it out to sea with him. But before that, we need to clean up the garbage at home. Zhuo Yi seemed to understand the meaning of Mo Jing and flew into the sky with a swoosh. After the fleeting figure, there seemed to be a little spark darting in the turbulent airflow. Imlo Town, the main road, which has gradually become prosperous in recent years, is now occupied by a group of ferocious pirates. The panicked townspeople fled to both sides of the street. Only a thin figure stood in the middle of the road like a stubborn stone. Albus Ken. He stood up immediately, just like when he was in the navy, even though he only had a makeshift pitchfork in his hand. Old man, dare you block the path of my poisonous dolphin, Luo Sibin? Do you want to die? The short and sturdy man laughed wildly from a distance. Under his spiky explosive head, he had a pair of malicious little eyes, a pointed nose, and thick lips like sausages. Once angry, the expression is terrifying as if some aquatic creature has climbed onto the shore. Full of deterrence. Behind him, a group of strangely dressed and smiling pirate officials lined up in a V-shaped pattern, each with crooked melons and cracked dates, unlike humans. They are like low-dot-quality shaking head electric fans bought from unknown sources, with their heads tilted and drooling one by one, their fierce gaze scanning the street 24 hours a day at 180 degrees, the villagers on both sides trembled with fear. A few days ago, Abi was among them. Ken didn't make way, when a navy decides to step forward, it's not about life or death, losing or winning. But justice. At least he thinks so. He clenched the pitchfork in his hand and whispered to his granddaughter trembling like a frightened deer behind him. Let's go, Dada, go find Mo Jing, don't come back. But Dada tightly grasped the wooden stick in his hand and was unwilling to leave no matter what. She knew what leaving meant, and besides, more than one person had already gone to find Mo Jing. 
the people in the town all know that Mo Jing's swordsmanship is good, after all, everyone has watched his performance, in the hearts of the people of Imlo town, the group of fishermen who can even deal with big fish should be the most skilled ones in town, Mo Jing is the most powerful one among them. However shit. Blood splattered on the ground. Without warning, Abi lifted the hacksaw in his hand and knocked a man hiding by the roadside to the ground. Look at his outfit, he's a fisherman. You were staring at me just now, he said fiercely. The man's neck was almost split in half, and he widened his eyes as he was about to say something, but Abi let out a strange smile, and the big sword struck down again like a giant stick. Go to hell. This time it's just the back of the knife. Bang. The long street is in chaos. The villagers who had been able to maintain their composure before screamed and were at a loss. Damn it. At the same time, several strong men stood up in anger from the crowd, drew their sharp fish-killing knives, and charged towards the pirates. Don't go. It's a trap. Experienced Ken recognized at a glance that it was a pirate's trap. They want to exhaust the combat power of Imlo Town in one fell swoop. However, in the chaotic scene, his aged voice was as inconspicuous as a piece of duckweed. Clouds shrouded in darkness, and in the wind came the proud laughter of the poisonous dolphin Luo Sibin. He put on two purple gloves full of spikes, flipped the two iron fan dot shaped shells on his chest back and forth, and each spike popped out, instantly transforming into a prickly pufferfish. Is this the fisherman you have high hopes for? He laughed wildly and punched wildly. Beat the fish killer in front of you until he's covered in blood holes, and the blood is raging. It's not much stronger than fish. He clenched his fists into his armor, huddled together, and ran straight towards another fisherman next to him. Poison Dolphin Bomb the screams of agony echoed one after another, the bloody scenes shake everyone's nerves. At this moment, the terror on Rosie's body was infinitely magnified, almost crushing the tense rationality of the people around him bit by bit. Rosie saw all of this in his eyes, and his laughter grew even more ferocious. A few days ago, he had already figured out the details of the small town through Abi and others. The mayor, the fisherman, Albus Ken, and Mo Jing, as the four spiritual pillars of the town, were his key targets from the beginning. As an experienced pirate, he knew very well that as long as these people were defeated, no matter how many people were left, they would only be lambs waiting to be slaughtered. When the time comes, not to mention wealth, the entire town will be in their possession. Now, the second of the four pillars has been removed, there's another one, it's almost there that's right, this is a conspiracy. From the appearance until now, every step has been in his, poisonous dolphin, Luo Sibin's calculations. As a loyal licking dog of the Creek Pirates, he perfectly adheres to the excellent tradition of the Creek Pirates. Despicable, shameless, and willing to do anything to achieve his goals. He is deeply proud of this. End of this chapter